In this example, we're going to take a ball with a radius of 14 and drill a hole out of it. And the radius of that hole is 9, right through its center. We're going to find the volume of the resulting solid using the washer method. So I think the first step we need to do is go ahead and draw the scenario. And I'm using graph paper um, because that will um, help us when, you know, graphing the ball and the x and y axis. So let's go ahead and draw the, the ball. So we'll dump this here. And I'm going to go ahead and make the ball um, right down a center of one of the Uh, grid lines. That way we can kind of see that that's going to be our y-axis. And so if I go ahead now and just draw that ball, because it's not a circle, it, it is a ball. Okay, and then um, the radius, there's the center, and so the radius right there is big R. And then we'll go ahead and draw the hole. And the hole down the center is going to look like that. And we'll go ahead and do one right there. And I'll draw the lines connecting. And then that way you can see the shape here of a right cylinder. Okay, and we know that this radius of the cylinder, we call it little r, is 9. And we do know that the larger radius of the ball is 14. So we can kind of see where we're going to go ahead and make that x and y axis. So let's go ahead and do that. Here's the y-axis right down the center and, of, and then the x-axis as well. Okay. So we do see that the x value of that radius is 14, meaning over here will be negative 14, positive 14, and then down below on the y-axis, negative 14. Now notice that the ball has this hole and it makes a right cylinder. So I do want to note that this point here, you could see where it intersects the ball when you drill the hole, is not quite at 14, that larger radius. Notice it looks a little bit below it. So that point is going to be important to us later on. So I want to acknowledge that now. Okay. And the next thing we want to do is notice what is the resulting solid. So I'm going to go ahead and shade in gray this solid that is left after drilling that hole of a ball. Okay. And so we see that it's going to be this gray area. And so if I do that, I'm going to go ahead and draw a rectangle um, randomly, right? Some Y sub I area. Okay. And shade it. And we see that this is, the thickness is delta Y. And now I'm going to go ahead and spin it around. Okay, so you get a washer that looks like this. And then I'm going to go ahead and just fill in that thickness so you can see the thickness of the washer. And then you see the hole of the washer is here. There. So let me go ahead and take that washer out and then that way you can see what it looks like. So I'm going to draw the washer a little bit like if you're watching it on top, right? Kind of looking at it at an angle. 
So we can see here that there's the thickness of the washer. And here is that gray area that we're going to see to find the volume. So delta Y is that thickness. And we can see that now, if I look at the center of the slab all the way out, I can see that that is going to be the larger radius of what we called R. Not necessarily 14, but just some radius, because it's not at 14, right? It's a little bit less than 14 on the X axis. So let's call that R sub I. The smaller radius, right, of this hole is a fixed, the radius never changes on a right cylind cylinder, right? Only the, the ball is going to have a mo uh, changing radius as we move along the circle. But that R is going to be fixed all the way through, and that's going to be little r, which is equal to 9. So we can kind of see that that little small circle there is that hole from the ball. R sub I, capital R sub I, again, is going to change, right? Because we could have the washer centered at the origin, but that's only one. As I move this washer along this curve, the radius is going to get smaller as we go up or lower on the y-axis, right? And it gets wider towards the center. So this where this x point y is, x sub i, y sub i, changes along that circle. So we can see that we're going to need that equation of this curve here in that first quadrant. So if I go ahead now, step now we can move on to step two because I think we kind of can see what's happening here. We see the region that we have to find the volume for and we have a picture of the washer so now let's go ahead and um, set up the equation so the next thing we're going to do is go ahead and look at that circle we know that this is a circle the larger r right the maximum r equal to 14 that circle that the washers are moving along is a circle with radius 14. So this means we're going to have x squared plus y squared equal 14 squared. This means that we'll have x squared plus y squared equals 196. And therefore, because we're taking the washers with respect to y, let's solve this equation in terms of y. So we'll solve for x. So we know that x is going to be equal to the square root of 196 minus y squared. The next thing we need to do is part 3, is now we can go ahead and set up the washer. So let's go ahead now and find the volume of just one slab, one washer. Let's find the volume for one slab. I feel like we should always just start with one or one washer. <laughs> okay, well, if I'm going to go ahead and do that, I'm going to go ahead and take this. and bring it down so we can have a picture of it right here next to us. Okay, so the volume of uh, just a, gen a random selected slab or washer is going to be equal to, well, the area of the circle of the outer radius, R sub I, minus the area of this circle, of the whole, right, with radius 9 times the height, which is delta y. So I'm just going to go ahead and 
outer minus inner, right? And the area of a circle is pi r squared, right? So we know that the area of a circle that we're going to be using is pi r squared, but we're going to have this area to be in between, right? So that means the volume will be pi big R sub i squared times the height, which is delta y, minus the area of that inner um, or the volume of that inner circle, which we know is pi r squared times the height delta y. Okay, so let's go ahead and set this up. Um, we do know that r sub i is moving along this curve, this circle. And since we're integrating with respect to y, we have that in step two, right? We know that x is equal to the square root of 196 minus y squared. So we can use that for r sub i because wherever we take our slab, it'll be this with respect to i, right? Wherever that index is. Um, little r we know is nine, so that's fixed throughout the entire problem. So let's go ahead and simplify this a little bit. I'm gonna get this one washer's volume is gonna be equal to pi times the square root of 196 minus y sub i squared squared times delta y minus pi times the radius r which is equal to 9 squared delta y. And just simplifying this a little bit I'm going to go ahead and factor out the pi and we're going to get 196 minus y sub i squared and the square root of something squared is just the radicand so we'll leave that minus now I'm going to take this delta at delta y and put it out here pi is over here so we're just left with 81 and then times delta y so there's the volume of one slab if I wanted to simplify this a little further I can I can get pi times uh, 115 minus y sub i squared delta y so there's the volume of one slab. Let's go ahead and find uh, the sum of n of them, right? How many washers am I going to take? Well, I'm going to take a whole bunch. Let's take n of them. So let's go ahead and find the estimated volume. And that's going to be, V is going to be approximately the summation of I equal 1 to N washers of pi times 115 minus Y sub I squared delta Y. Okay, but N of them is just not going to be enough. Let's find the exact volume, right? So if we find the exact volume, exact volume. That means V is going to be equal to the limit as n approaches infinity of the summation from i equal 1 to n of pi times 115 minus y sub i squared delta y. So you can see now that we're setting up the integral. We're ready now. We have an infinite number. We're ready to go ahead and find this exact volume of the region. So if I do this, I'm going to go ahead and do it up here for number six. And now we're going to go ahead and set up the integral. Now recall that up here in our original graph, we have this ball with a radius of 14, but the hole that we drilled doesn't necessarily start at 14, right? So the area that we're going to go for right here, notice it stops right here at this xy coordinate. So it's really important to see that our integral will be 0 to this 
y value since we're integrating with respect to y and not to 14. So what is this value? Right? Where am I integrating? Now, I know this is just one half of it, right? It's just the hemisphere or some yeah. And then two of them will be the volume of the region. So I'm going to go ahead and set up the integral using the summit laws of symmetry from zero to this y value, whatever it is, and just multiply the integral by two, right? Work smarter, not harder. So let's go ahead and find this y value. Well, what do we know about this point? This point intersects this circle and this cylinder, right? Well, we know what this x value is. The radius is nine. So we know the x value at that moment is going to be 9. Well, we can go ahead and use that and the equation of the circle to find the intersection. The intersection of this, which is 9, and the circle is just these two equal to each other, right? So let's go ahead and find that y value. So we know that x is equal to the square root of 196 minus y squared. We know that that intersection point has the radius or that x value of 9. So the intersection is going to be 9 equal to square root of 196 minus y squared. Let's go ahead and solve as we would in algebra. We'll square each side and get 81 equal to 196 minus y squared. Therefore, we can see that y squared is going to be equal to 115, and then that y coordinate is going to be the square root of 115. So the limits of integration is going to be a equals 0, and then b is equal to the square root of 115. So if I set up the integral, I know that the volume, so I'll do it down here next to it, right? The volume is going to be 2 times, because I need the two parts of it, right? So 2 times the integral from 0 to the square root of 115 of, and then right here, pi times 115y minus y squared dy. So it seemed like a lot of work to set up the estimation and the summation, but it actually is, works out well because now when we set up the integral, it's much quicker. And now we can go ahead and integrate this um, integral to find the volume of the region. So we're all set up to go. So I'm going to go ahead and take out that pi and have 2 pi times 115y minus y cubed over 3 evaluated from 0 to the square root of 115. So this is going to be equal to two pi times 115 times square root of 115 minus square root of 115 cubed over 3 minus 115 times 0 minus 0 cubed over 3. So we can see that this last part behind the subtraction sign is just going to be 0. And we're just left with 2 pi times this difference here. So let's go ahead and put that in the calculator. So we get 2 pi, and I'm going to write it just how it looks in there. Um, so 115 times the square root of 115. minus parenthesis the square root of 115 parenthesis cubed divided by 3 
and then I'll close it. And we get an approximately, we'll round to two decimal places as it asks, 5,165.77. Uh, and it's volume, so it's cubic units. All right, I hope this helps.